what's your perspective? Lensec Live. This is Neil Haley. I'm here with Michael Trask and also Keith Harris. And our topic today, say hello, guys. Again, uh, still working remote, but also uh, constantly reaching the whole world. But our topic today, which is really interesting, involves, again, Lensec software, how it integrates with other technologies. Those, th those other technologies really make our solution work so smooth and easy and it makes it really easy to use, but we're able to integrate with many different things. So I want to say hi to you guys. How are you, Keith? How are you, Michael? Yeah, we're doing well, doing great. Excited about today's topic. Absolutely. So let's kind of just kind of jump right in, Keith, and talk about how we integrate with access control and kind of define what access control is, because a lot of times people don't understand access control and then how it integrates with our software. Well, access control, we talk about it a lot. Um, our primary uh, um, platform that we use at Lensec is uh, a video management software, but we integrate with several different access control companies which are third-party companies. We don't use our own access control uh, software. We integrate with uh, other companies out there like Galaxy Control Systems and Badge Pass and uh, um, brand new to our system is uh, DSX and RX2 and the list keeps growing and growing. As we get into uh, the coming year, we're going to be adding more and more access control companies. So what is access control? A lot of people have heard of it, but they might not know exactly what it is. So essentially, it's a, it's a system that is deployed on-site for security, and it integrates with the doors in the building. So they can put uh, mag locks and um, uh, doors uh, that have uh, uh, latch locks that will come into place so that they can uh, trigger those remotely um, from their security software. What we've done at uh, Lensec is use the video management software to tie in the cameras, your video camera stream from your CCTV cameras in with the uh, security scenario of uh, being able to trigger those locks remotely. So not only do you have the ability to trigger the lock, but you can see what's going on by putting a camera on that doorway. And it becomes a, uh, uh, an integrated solution. So you're taking disparate systems, diverse systems, and merging them together to make a better security footprint overall. And the video management software becomes the platform for that um, in terms of day-to-day -day management. You can get everything set up in the access control software and then use your video management software to make it better. Yeah, and Keith, uh, to, to just add to that, yeah, the, the way that um, that Perspective VMS or in Lensec do that is, you know, we're not, uh, we don't have our own access control solution that we're pushing as a solution. And the, the advantage to end user customers and integrators out there is, um, you know, end user customers may have a fully functioning working access control system and they don't want to be forced to maybe spend money to, to have to replace that entire system just in order to get that. So uh, we have integrations that are already in place. And we're constantly working with access control manufacturers to continue to grow that list. So if, um, if our end users have a particular platform that we currently don't integrate with, they just need to share that with us and we will uh, immediately start working uh, on that integration. We're an agile development software company, so we can make that, uh, that integration, uh, at least on a transactional log process, happen very quickly. Uh, and then we will do the more advanced of being able to send commands to unlock locked doors directly from um, the video management software. There's a couple of two things that our, our integrations team focuses on when they're bringing access control into uh, the video management software. They focus on pulling events from the access control software. Number two, they focus on um, being able to do uh, door control inside of the PVMS software. So we've, we'll be able to lock, unlock, and pulse doors within the PVMS software. So that's the second piece of integration. The third priority that they focus on for access control is being able to stream video from Perspective VMS through to the access control software so that if you're in that software, then you can pull up our video stream 
or access uh, information that is stored within Perspective BMS. That's a much harder job to do, quite honestly. The first two are, are easier to accomplish, but it requires uh, deep inner workings in the software development to make it happen, not only in the video management software, but also in the access control software. So, Michael, when you talk about bi-directional, as we're kind of talking about integrations, there could be, we, can, we can integrate with access control where basically uh, we, know, we know what it integrates with it so that basically it's all together working seamlessly. But what about what's bi-directional? What's that? How does that make that difference? Yeah, so typically, when, when, typically, Neil, when people are talking about access control integration, a lot of times what that integration is, is what we would refer to as a transactional log. So that is the, you know, every single time, you know, Keith used his badge at a door and it has the date, time, Keith, and then there's an attached video clip. And so I can, and then I can filter on all of that information. So maybe I want to select, hey, every time Keith, between this date and this date, used his access at the front entrance to the office. And it'll, it'll filter those transactions in a log format and you go through and click through them and you'll have the associated video. So when we talk about bi-directional, it's just, uh, and that's also sending the commands back to the, uh, the access control system directly from the VMS, the prospective VMS, in order to unlock lock pulse that doors but it also it really entails that bi-directional is the last thing Keith previously mentioned, and that is also sending those video clips directly that have been uh, in PVMS and they're housed in PVMS, sending those back into the access control platform. So if they're using the access, if they happen to be in the access control software and they're looking at some trans transactional logs or items, that they're also being able to pull that video from Perspective VMS back into their software. So that's the that's really the, the main piece of that bi-directional uh, because we already know the commands to unlock, lock the doors because they're provided to us from the access control manufacturer and we're sending that through to unlock those doors. Okay. All right, now another technology to talk about, which is pretty good, interesting, is R F I D. Can you kind of explain that to me? Because uh, a lot of this technology is new to me in a lot of ways. I'm learning all about our software for the last year and a half to close to two years. But when it comes to the other integrations, we keep always making new ones. So I have to always keep up to date with technology. Can you explain that? Well, you're familiar with R F I D because if you go to the uh, the, uh, the department store and buy a, a new suit jacket, for example, there's probably gonna be one of those plastic strips on it with a radio frequency identification device attached to it. And so when you walk out through the door and they forget to take that thing off, the, the alarm goes off, right? So that's RFID. That's basically a small, tiny little device. It's, it's smaller than this little adapter for my phone. I mean, it's, it's sm so small and thin wow. that it can fit inside of just about anything. And these things are really cool because they emit a small amount of, of radio frequency into the surrounding area. And um, when they put RFID into a building, whether it's a, a warehouse for loss prevention or whether it's a store for, um, for uh, you know, retail uh, merchandise or whether it's, um, you know, a, a college that has RFID, RFID devices, um, in their computers so that those computers don't walk away um, from them. Uh, these, these devices are designed to emit a small frequency so that when they pass close by a reader, that reader that's a built into the infrastructure can pick up that frequency and detect the location of the RFID uh, item. And so these RF RFID antennas and um, little devices are put into all sorts of things computers, um, uh, uh, clothing, boxes at warehouse facilities. Um, so they can be, even be built into your, your key fob for your access control. There's all sorts of things that these can be put into. Um, you know, for example, there's, we have a customer who actually installs these into weapons um, at their, their secure facility so that when they assign weapons, they know where they're going within the facility and they can use a software to be able to map that location, map that facility, 
and see where their devices are and if they're leaving the property. Okay, so that's important to note because when you integrate an RFID um, program into Perspective VMS, then you can pick up the alerts from that particular facility. So the software will, will send the alerts over to Perspective VMS, and then uh, Perspective VMS will pick up the information from the, the RFID readers to be able to tag the metadata, the information that we store within our software. Once we store it within our software, then we can use it to let folks know that certain things are happening. We can use work leverage workflows to be able to let folks know, hey, this particular item, whatever it is, has left the vicinity, has left the facility. It's out, it's checked out, it's gone. So, and um, those are, are those items are very helpful in that type of scenario because it helps you to increase your knowledge of where your assets are. Yeah, and Keith, I'll add to that too, just to further illustrate, you know, you may have a, for example, we'll say a school and they have some high, high dollar items, whether they're projectors or whatever they may want to be or computers, laptops, whatever. And if they have an RF, RFID on that and it's integrated into these, you know, the, the video management software, you know, something leaves that room. Well, when it leaves that room and it goes close to that reader, it's going to make a mark and it's going to tag and say, okay, this is where it is. But that can also, for example, take a snapshot. You have a camera positioned by that doorway, or if you associate a camera nearby where all of these readers are, every time any of those devices go by those readers and it triggers that, hey, it's going by this, so this is where this is located, it can also capture a, either a snapshot or it can capture a short little video clip, and those can be associated. Uh, Keith mentioned workflows those can all be set up on the back end so that it's all automated. So now you can start, you know, and then if you need to, you know, you have, you know, the RFID tag number of a particular piece of equipment or whatever, you can then go filter within finding, Hey, show me all the times that this RFID tag and where it went. And then you have all of that information, you know, maybe to see that, Hey, Keith is the one that took this projector, wheeled it down to his room. We can see it went by this reader, by this reader, by this reader. And hey, it's in this room and it was never brought back. We can quickly say, all right, well, Keith was the last one to, to take that. So we have, you know, Keith, we need that projector back or whatever it may be. But more so if it's also leaving a property and you're catching one of those readers because the, the device or the piece of equipment is leaving your property, you want to have, you know, proof that you can go back and say, hey, who is it that's walking out of the door with your RFID um, you can device? You can even cross-reference the RFID information that's in the device with the key card that somebody's carrying. If these don't match up, then they don't get access to certain things. And so there's some very advanced things that you can do with some of the integrations, the security integrations, by linking all these tools together. And so that's a helpful, helpful uh, uh, tip to keep in mind. And that's a great point you make, Keith, is a lot of, let's say, you just have cameras and you don't have the ability to integrate great technology with them. It just becomes a waste in certain ways because you're just getting, you're not getting things that we're going to talk about today that you need in physical security. You need to have certain analytics. You need to have certain ways of watching and guarding your building that you don't have if you just have cameras and it you're just able to view the cameras. It utilizing becomes it becomes an issue, Neil, of being proactive rather than reactive. Um, historically, CCTV and video surveillance has been accused of being a reactionary tool. Um, well, you can only react to it once you get a chance to see the video. Well, when you start leveraging some of these other security tools, you're setting up a proactive situation. And so you can be proactive by triggering alerts. You can be proactive by locking things down when certain things, when certain parameters occur. So now you've, you've moved from being um, something that's too little too late to being something that is, is much more happening right now. We can act, we can react quickly, we can get people and, and assets into position to be able to better manage our security footprint overall. And Keith, you bring up a good point with some of these different type of integrations and analytics and other types of tools, 
the the other advantages too is is the video management software is not just being used in that reactive way and it's not just simply being used for video now you actually because you know we we know a lot of times the security budget's kind of the last thing that gets assigned and if things need to be cut in different places whether it's schools or organizations or corporations uh, sometimes the money then just gets pulled from the security because it's a it's a nice to have thing but with some of these different integrations and different tools we're going to be talking about throughout this conversation it it starts bringing in operations and other budgets that people may not think about but there's tools and different reports and all kind of things from these integrations that really help you run your business more efficiently as well and it's not simply just, you know, you're being able to use your security and your video surveillance system for as a business operations tool. That's a great tool, yes. Definitely. Now, another technology is called intrusion detection. And I think it makes sense, but maybe for people out there that might think they understand this, Keith, explain that. Well, this, this is set up around a perimeter of a site. And I'm going to bring up a... Uh, um, page here and this will help kind of explain the security perimeter. All right, so when we're looking at a security perimeter, this is a fairly advanced site and what you're looking at here are layers of security. And so when you're setting up a perimeter, it's going around a facility or a property and you're talking about the outer edge here. This particular one uses an electric fence to uh, monitor the perimeter. But when you're talking about intrusion detection, devices can be set up that are send, sending infrared beams between uh, pillars that are positioned around the security uh, perimeter. Um, this perimeter can have uh, these pillars that are set up that are uh, uh, sending an infrared beam between the pillars. When this beam is broken, then you have, uh, you have the scenario where um, the alert can be sent, okay? So that somebody crosses the perimeter between two pillars, whether there's a fence there or not, if they cross that perimeter and the beam is broken, then an alert can be sent. And um, certain things can happen as a result of that. Say if you've got a PTZ camera that is looking at um, in a particular direction most of the time. When you have a beam that's broken, then you can trigger a workflow alert to change the field of view of that camera. It can spin the camera around to a certain position, a preset position based on that particular action. And so um, the, the intrusion detection system captures the alert, but then the security integration allows that information to be sent over to the video management software so that Cameras can be moved, resolution can, can be changed from a low resolution to a higher resolution. Um, there's lots of things. You can tag an event, bookmark an event, so that you can go back and capture that information later. So these are helpful sort of things, um, and that's a good way to set up a scenario for an intrusion detection system. Okay. All right. Now, Michael, one thing we've been talking about since COVID-19 is involving you know, facial recognition in certain ways and looking at certain technology that integrates with facial recognition. Kind of describe what's happening with analytics with a video management software or surveillance software when in regarding uh, facial recognition. Yeah, well, Neil, so just for clarification, facial recognition versus facial detection. So two different things. Facial detection is an analytic that detects that, yes, that is a human face there, right? So facial recognition, what that's doing is taking that human face, taking a snapshot, comparing it to a database of faces that are, you know, Neil Haley's face. This is Neil Haley's image. So it's searching, hey, when you, when you, when you step in front of facial recognition, it's trying to match your face using algorithms and everything to the files that are in that, in that database to say, yep, this is Neil Haley. That's who this person is. That's, uh, when it comes to COVID-19, really what we're talking about and ways people can use the technology that is now available is they've taken the face detection analytic and they've added onto that. So 
they, they know, hey, we're detecting that this is a face. Now they've been able to take those algorithms and add to them and say, hey, we want to identify whether or not somebody is, has a mask, right, is wearing a mask or not. So something from your, you know, from your nose down or something from your mouth down or maybe even something that's sometimes you see people wearing their mask just over their, their chin or whatever. So the, the analytics are now adding on to that face detection. And they, so companies are now able to release a face mask detection analytic which is really a build on on top of something that was already there. So how that can be used, obviously, is you add that analytic, use existing cameras that are deployed within Perspective BMS, and then that analytic can, like we've talked about throughout today's call, that can trigger alerts, that can trigger actions to bring people's attention. These things come into play when it comes to, you know, jurisdiction, states, all different counties have different compliance rules or regulations that have been going into place uh, throughout the country uh, and around the world uh, for what it what they need to comply with. So there's a lot of tools. Face mask detection is just one because if you don't want people on your property or in your building without a face mask and they walk in and it detects, it can alert, set off a trigger, let the uh, operator security team know, hey, you know, this person has, uh, has come on site we need to go approach them, let them know that they need to have a mask on for the safety of everybody. And because that is either the, the state law at the current time or the whatever the regulation may be. So there's um, that's, a, that's a great new one that is like a lot of things that are changing quickly and coming to market with, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic. That is just one of those, but it's, it's, it's an add on to the, to the face detection. And that's important to note because facial recognition, if you're doing this server-based or whatever, that's a very processor intensive type of thing. Mm -hmm. Face detection is a much leaner, thinner, you know, pro let, uses a fraction of the processor uh, necessary to, to do that. So that, that is a big distinction between facial recognition versus facial detection. And for our security uh, technicians that might be watching, that's important to note because when you're talking about setting up a server that's capturing uh, video for facial recognition, you can be talking about cores of processing power needed for a single camera. So when you're talking about capturing facial recognition on multiple cameras, you're talking about a server that has multiple cores. I mean, I'm talking, um, you, might need, you might need to have two to four cameras per server because they are using so many cores to be able to process this information on the server side of things. And so when you're talking about video analytics, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, and uh, processing at the uh, computer or on the server is very intensive because the computer is doing a lot of things at once, including capturing recording video. And if, if you if you are using it for processing power for facial recognition, you might need separate server or servers to do that job. When you're processing information at the camera, however, the camera is carrying some of the load. So there's um, that's a, an edge-based video analytic versus a server-based video analytic or an embedded analytic that happens at the, the server itself. Yeah, Keith brings up a good point. It's, I would think in most cases, the preference is to have those cameras running the analytics and then our system receives the metadata along with the, um, the video stream and it's able to then put all that together uh, in, and give you the output that you need and then give you the reports you need and all of, all of that. But that is, that, that is, the preferred easier way is to is to go ahead and use the edge analytic for each individual camera has its own processing power. Uh, now, obviously, server-based analytics, if you have cameras already deployed and they're working perfectly fine and they don't have those capabilities, that's exactly now where you have the server-based analytics to fill that, that void. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a whole new camera, spend the money to get a really expensive, you know, camera that's got all of these different analytics built in because the other part of that equation, the more types of analytics you start adding to that camera, those aren't free add-ons. Those things keep adding to the price of that camera. So, right. um, so another way to look at it in that case is you have the server-based analytics. And to Keith's point, 
certain analytics are very processor intensive, others are not. So, um, but for the processor intensive ones, yeah, it might be best uh, when you set up the architecture that there's a run on the, each individual camera on the edge. Okay, you know, it, when I think about the technology that's available in video surveillance, it's crazy because people think that's like, you know, past 21st century technology because we think of a lot of places that have not gone to this yet. You know, you watch a sci-fi show or certain things and they show how they're utilizing the cameras and picking up every little thing. That's a this big pet peeve for me. This technology is available <laughs> for commercial use now. People might yeah. think it's not there yet. Huh? Which is like, it's a big pet know, peeve for me for sure. because CSI and some of those uh, cop shows really push the limit on, on the reality. Um, but then also, uh, just like Star Trek back in the day, they drive the idea behind real technology that comes in the future. And so we're seeing today some of the technology that um, Hollywood has been dreaming about for years. Only on CSI, but then you see other shows where they go ahead and they figure out a way you can erase the uh, DVR, right? Uh, MDR right. For, you know, we'll erase the you can't do that stuff anymore <laughs> if you have the right technology in place. Yeah, we're going to get right you things in place. regardless of somewhere. It'll be in the cloud or somewhere. You're not getting away with things for sure. <laughs> right. Or oh, the stories that we're hearing of hacking cameras. Well, use our solution. That's going to – we'll deter that for sure because if you're hacking certain cameras, we'll know uh, with our solution. Now, another really cool technology that I kind of want to – close out with, but if you have any others, is drone integration. Drones have been big in the news and different things like that, but our software can do that as well, Keith, right? It can, and one thing I wanna make sure we save a little bit of time for is automatic license plate recognition. But drone integration is sure. helpful um, because um, this is something that, that a lot of people aren't doing, and it's, it's a unique scenario, but there's a lot of drones flying out there these days, and people have been dreaming for years about how to bring the drone in, under the security umbrella and how to be able to use what uh, what the drone can capture. And uh, we've got some great guys, some sales engineers and uh, um, technicians uh, that have helped figure this out. And so they're using common off the shelf components and bringing together a solution that can leverage perspective VMS to be able to capture video from a drone that's in action. They send a drone up flying over a region in the area. This is a military um, solution that can be leveraged for just about anyone who wants to help, wants to put it together. And our technology and our sales engineers can help you do this. But what they're doing, they send the drone up flying. They're using a controller that can capture the video, live, live video that is connecting wirelessly to the drone. And then they are using a video output to feed that video feed into a rugged NVR that's built into a portable case with a bank of batteries, okay? So they can take a Pelican case loaded with an NVR and batteries out on site where they're flying a drone, capture the video. They're not only capturing the video on the drone itself onto an SD card, but they're also capturing it here locally on their portable device. And this thing is loaded with batteries. It has a rugged NVR in it that's capturing the live video feed as it happens so that when they take all of this equipment back to, and they might be flying multiple drones around an area, they take all this equipment back to base, upload the video into the perspective VMS uh, um, uh, tool and uh, into, the, into the server so that they can view it on the software. And they can put these these drone cameras adjacent to one another and see multiple shots at once and even use the software to build offload a video collage of, of multiple uh, videos side by side so that they can see exactly what's going on across an area from multiple views. It's just an amazing uh, tool that uh, some of our technicians have put together for uh, a team, a military team in the Middle East. And that's what's interesting. People need to call us, right, or or email us today, Michael. They want to learn more about what types of integrations we offer. Yeah, and I wanted to touch base a little bit more too because it's very topical now, related to some COVID, some analytics that people may or may not think about. Obviously, the face mask detection we we spoke about earlier, but some of the other ones that uh, you know people counting, 
some regulations, hey, you can, or occupancy rates, right? Mm -hmm. Some people say, hey, you can now, at least where I live in the county that I live, restaurants are allowed to be open for indoor and outdoor seating, but the indoor seating cannot exceed 50% occupancy. And then, so there's, there's analytics that can, you know, you put what your, that occupancy is, or it, it, it uses a ratio of what the occupancy is within that. And it, it will alert when you are at that number or exceed that, that percentage. Uh, there's people counting. So, you know, how many people are in a certain area at a given time? Uh, that's another great analytics. Some things that people may not think about is, you know, heat mapping, right? To kind of seeing where is all of the, where are all of the people going through an area and what are they really hot areas? Well, maybe that's an, a way for you to now look at that operationally and say, can we do something maybe to kind of deter people or redirect people? So, maybe spread them out some so that it, the one area is not always getting, you know, that you're not getting all of this congestion into one area. Something that's, else. And that's heat mapping for occupancy and traffic within an area, not necessarily um, fever detection or thermogenic Correct. cameras. Correct, Keith. Com that's something different. That's completely yeah, different. That, that yeah. leads us into, of course, then in integrating with the new fever detection cameras, right? The, all the, a lot of these camera companies have come out with a, fever detecting it senses, uh, you know, it can, it's reading what the temperature is, body temperature of a person. So there's that integration as well. That's another tool that can be used. So there are a lot of uh, analytics and tools that are either going to be, you can have them either edge-based or server-based that people can use to help them return to work, return to school in a safe manner and, and help try to, I mean, the goal is here is to not have another uptick um, in, in cases with the pandemic. So these are all a layered approach, not one single one, you know, a thermal camera that's taking a body temperature. Yes, it's great to know, but studies have shown that you can go five, six days being a carrier before you show symptoms. So just to think this through, if somebody's coming, if you're an employee coming into work for five, six days in a row and you're green lighted because your temperature's fine and you feel fine, then on the sixth day you come in and your temperature's elevated. Yeah, we're going to keep you out, but that doesn't mean you haven't caused harm by spreading already. That the thermal camera, I personally think is, you know, my opinion on this is that it's more effective for visitors coming to your office who aren't your every single day employees, right? So, all of the, that's just an example, but all of these pieces and parts have to be part of a completely layered security approach when, when you're talking about uh, COVID-19. You know, you're still going to want your people to be wearing masks. You want, you're still going to be want, wanting them to social distance. By the way, there's analytics that can see how far apart, pe you know, be measuring the distances between people, right? So there's all kinds of other tools that people need to be thinking out of the box. They need to think of their video surveillance, you know, uh, software their video management software as more than just a way of recording video in case they need to go back and, and look at video. Yeah, this is amazing. The technology already being developed just because of COVID-19 and how to take temperatures to detect masks. Uh, wow. Uh, very interesting, but I think it's very important because it's very hard to monitor a business, especially with all these things. So many people that, might have just gotten the very simple simplistic cameras and stuff like that we are the security experts give us a call today and we can kind of really dive deeper into your business and see well what's going on and all that because that's what we are here to help uh keith you wanted to talk about before that we end uh involving license plate recognition explain that technology well there's there's a lot of folks out there who are looking for a way to capture information, whether it's, uh, you know, people coming into and out of a, a, a particular area, a parking lot, a security gate, a, um, let's uh, say maybe a neighborhood, um, and they'll put up a camera to try to capture license plates. Um, that's helpful. It captures information that maybe you can go back later and review, but there's a, an advanced video analytic that, uh, that we can leverage from uh, third party, uh, uh, technology partners that will capture the automatic capture the license plate information and they'll automatically convert that license plate image they'll capture the image they'll use uh, OCR technology to convert the license plate information to text then it can be compared to a database 
It can either be compared to a local database. Let's say it's a, a neighborhood association that has a database of their, of their residents' uh, license plates. They can compare the OCR captured text with their database. Or on a more advanced level, there's a national database that, that uh, can be compared to that can, can um, you know, see what other things this car or these drivers have been related to. So when they capture that information, it's really cool. Um, and we have integrated some of that automatic license plate technology into our software by working with these third party technology vendors. Um, we can pull the information from their software and use the database that they capture in their software and, and bring the information in so that it can be uh, reportable in Perspective VMS. And that's really nice for those folks that are trying to, to quickly pull up a report to see who's moving through security gates, whether folks are, are secure or not. That information on a more advanced note can even be compared, a license plate capture can be compared with a database to allow a gate to open or not open, depending on the information that's captured. So it can be a very advanced uh, technology when you start leveraging workflows. You can really start to imagine how you can, can really capture and improve your security at the perimeter when you start to use license plate recognition technology. Yeah, Keith, and I think that's, you You touched on something I was going to bring up, the, you know, because we started with access control, right? Well, access control doesn't necessarily have to be limited to a person entering a building or a space. So using the uh, license plate recognition, it, it checks that car. It says, yep, this is, this is an approved car. Can open that gate. Someone doesn't have to have a badge, doesn't have to open any doors, doesn't have to do anything. That process is automatically, and, and it, it does that. But then, you know, that's great for communities and different places too. It's, it's not, um, so the tool can be used in a, in a myriad of, of examples, whether they're just opening doors in a, in a neighborhood, a gated community, or if it's meant to, in a, for security, cause you have, let's say a, um, a list that you're trying, you're trying to find a particular vehicle. Maybe it's a stolen vehicle. So you're, you know, there's a, there's a, a an alert out for looking for a certain vehicle. Well, you can go in there and you can add that vehicle into your, your database as a not approved car, right? And maybe it picks that up and it then can alert you, hey, this vehicle we just caught on our camera, we captured the license plate, here it is. And it can, it can, it can be a way to assist and, and find those types of uh, instances. As and well. all of these things can be a force multiplier. Instead of employing personnel to cover all of these different areas, you're now using technology to, um, to help be able to reduce the amount of personnel you need to get all of these, this vast amount of things done. And so it's a force multiplier um, to be able to have all of these different bases covered with a less amount of people monitoring it um, on the front end. And that's, that's a great point because it's, uh, you know, a lot of times what will happen is people train for situations, security officers, security uh, personnel, and they've trained, hey, when, when we get this forced entry alert or we get this alert, hey, my training tells me I'm supposed to do A, B, C, D, and E, right? Well, when that, when that moment happens, even though the people have trained and trained and trained, it's never happened. How does each individual person react when that moment actually does occur? You know, you may have fog brain. You may totally freeze. And by using all of these integrated technologies, if there's a, you know, the, it's using the workflow technology, you have the trigger, and then what you end up having is, you know, not the first thing on, the first five, six things on that list of what your procedures are supposed to be are all happening simultaneously right away, even if the operator is having that momentary frozen, what do I do, panic moment, but then once they come back around, all of that stuff's already happened. And now if they have to get up and actually go to the location to mitigate whatever that issue is, all of that other stuff's already happening in the background, right? So they can, they can actually go to and address the issue um, head on. Wow. So, you know, what we've learned today, as I have summarized this, is basically all the different types of technology that is able to integrate with Perspective VMS and learning about how that technology works. And you guys are such experts 
Keith and Michael have been able to explain in so many ways how that technology works with our software and what that technology does. So if you have questions or comments, please visit Lensec.com. And if you want to catch up with our lives, you go to Lensec.com slash live and also follow us on all different social media platforms. I appreciate you guys both stopping by today. Keith, do you have anything else to add before we say goodbye? No, I would say just make sure on the front end that uh, either as if you're an end user or if you're a security technician who's developing a design for a customer, you should pay close attention to the technology that's available. You don't have to use it all, but pick and choose the ones that you need very well. Make the recommendations that are required for the job and um, be confident that you can come to Lensec, come to our sales engineers to help you develop a solid solution that is built on proof and concept. Awesome. Well, again, guys, thanks for stopping by. Uh, really enjoyed this conversation. Very educational and introspective VMS. Make sure you check us out as well. And I guys appreciate it. And it was another great What's Your Perspective Lensec Live session. And I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Take care, guys.